a carbon fiber rim that's 100% recyclable and damps vibration better than the other leading wheel brands. These are the two big claims of the new brand Forge and Bond. No, 100% recyclable does not mean you're gonna throw the wheel in the recycling bin like a beer can. What it does mean, what it does mean, got the Industry 9 hubs talking here. What it does mean is that the byproducts left over from manufacturing the rim can be chopped off and thrown back into the mix to make other products like say tire levers. This is quite different than traditional carbon manufacturing where uh, pre-preg carbon with epoxy in it uh, is cut off and then that just gets thrown in the trash, the excess material gets thrown in the trash. Yes, you can burn off that epoxy, but it's very expensive, so brands will just, uh, it's cheaper to buy new prepreg than try to recycle that excess material. So that is a noticeable difference in this new style fusion fiber material you may have heard about already by a company by the name of CSS, which is the parent company of Forge and Bond. CSS has made products for the likes of Chris King, Evil, and Revel. There are some in the works with other brands that CSS cannot yet talk about. But what we can talk about in this video is how these wheels, particularly the rims, come together, uh, what it's like to ride the things. And also you can hear from Joe Stanish, the co-founder of CSS, a man who worked for a long time at Envy Wheels, uh, at RockShox, many other places, and chief engineer at CSS, Kel Kirby. But first, take a second, hit that subscribe button, that helps me out. Now sit back and enjoy the ride on Forge and Bond. All right. Out with the recycling, in with the numbers. Looking at a 380 gram rim, just over 1500 grams for the set with the Industry 9 Torch hubs. 25 millimeter internal hookless. Retail price, $2,600. Compare this to say, Envy G23. That's also in the, you know, just under $2,600. Wheel set price that has a 23 mil internal, also hookless. Uh, the G23's rim is a scooch lighter at 329 grams, or about 1300 grams for the set. Another comparable set would be the Zip 101 Explorer that has the ankling rim, the weebly wobbly rim. That wheel set goes for $1900 and weighs more. That's about uh, 16. 20 grams for the wheel set. So those are some basic numbers for comparison. So big wide rim, you know, aimed at the 35 to 45 mil gravel tire. There's also a mountain bike wheel set being launched at the same time. I don't speak mountain bike, so we're just talking gravel wheels here. So how do these things come together? Well, there are five main steps. Joe and Kel were both you know, a little cagey about going into details, but both said it goes together in five main steps. Go through five thermal cycles, and that's the unique part of a thermos, thermoplastic versus a thermoset, is the first thermal cycle is to create the tape <coughs> in uh, the impregnation of the fibers. Um, the second step is, is when we cut and place through, through automation and tack everything together, um, it goes through a small thermal cycle. Uh, the step three is consolidation of that laminate and using all of the heat to bring it up into one homogeneous uh, structure. Um, the fourth is where we, we thermal form into a 3D shape and we cut all these little individual Legos I refer to them as. And the fifth and final step is where we take all those together in a closed mold and, and uh, make a hollow core structure. The layers of carbon are laid down in strips of tape by machine. That's also a divergence from common way to build carbon, which whether done in North America where a very few brands are doing this or in Taiwan where the great majority of carbon frames and a lot of the carbon wheels are put together, there it's done by hand. So forge a bond by doing it with robots, uh, that's something different. The fact that it's laid down in layers of tape with nylon 
in the carbon fiber instead of epoxy is another big difference. Kel says this nylon, this industrial grade nylon allows for a level of vibration damping that you just don't get with epoxy. The nylon matrix in our material, the part that holds it all together, has a pretty sweet property to it. Um, it has a damping characteristic to it that you cannot replicate with an epoxy-based composite. Um, so we've done testing, um, and hopefully you feel it in the ride of the product. But uh, any kind of vibration input, impact, all that feedback you get, really prevalent on like big, stiff handlebars, but you feel it on, on bike rims too. Um, our material can dampen that Sorry, it can damp. I almost did it myself. Uh, that's how hard it is. It damps out those qualities. It's like adding a shock absorber inside the material of your of your part. So we do we do drop testing. Um, we even do ride testing. That 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 we're still analyzing now. But I can simulate an impact on a on a product, and then I can measure the frequency of that feedback, and I can take that and I can put it into some graphs to show you the intensity of the feedback you get and you'll feel the difference of that in the ride quality of the product. Less hand fatigue, more comfortable on your gravel product, on your mountain product, it's gonna be a more controlled feel, it's gonna be a more damp feel, it's gonna give you more confidence um, and we don't have to band-aid our product by making it really compliant or soft. And that's a word you hear a lot in thermo, uh, thermoset world is you try and band-aid this, this harsh feedback by making something really compliant, but then you lose the control and you lose the performance you may want. We don't have to do that with our product. Like many of Envy's high-end wheels, these carbon wheels are produced in Utah. Why Utah? Joe says simply because Utah and Seattle are the two big hubs for aerospace, which is what is driving so much of the carbon fiber these days and the bike industry is drafting in a sense behind that. Now this thermo plastic design is not new. Kel will tell you and Joe will tell you it's been around for 25 plus years but being used in this particular way uh, with tight angles for bicycle wheels is very much new. So Joe and Kel are here to tell you that they are forging a new pun intended path by using this material in a new way for bicycle wheels. The rim has a bit of a wavy shape to it. You know, think about the uh, Zips humpback wheels or the Princeton Tech humpback wheels, but on a teensy tiny minor scale. And here it's not done for aerodynamics, it's done just to shave a little bit of material in between the spoke holes. They've got something cool going on for anchoring the spoke nipples. They had a chop rim that they were showing us at the press launch here in Boulder, Colorado, but they were shaking their fingers and told us we couldn't share that, uh, but just a way to keep the nipple anchored and precisely aligned with the spoke um, in the strongest way possible. But the external look is you got a bit of a wave to it. Joe and Kel are proud of the finish, not just because it looks cool, but because the raw carbon shows off their handiwork in that there's no finish work to be done once it comes out of the mold. It's so highly and smoothly compacted. What you see is what you get right out of the mold. So how do these things ride? Well, I've just had a couple rides on them on this Canyon Grail, which has a very cushy VCLS post and my favorite tires, the Schwalbe G1, RS's. So that's very much stacking the deck for comfort. So how do they feel? Do they feel different than say like the, you know, NV G23s that I've been riding quite a bit? If I was given a blind taste test, I honestly don't think I could tell the difference, especially on a bike like this that's already, you know, pretty cush at the rear end. Yes, they're light. Yes, they're uh, fairly responsive. A good part of that could be down to just the geometry, right? It's not just the rim that you're feeling when you ride or when you accelerate, but it's how many spokes are laced into the hub, into the rim, how they're configured, and of course, like how the whole bike is put together. So just being able to see, can I tell this rim has 20% greater vibration damping than another rim? I don't know if that's the exact figure that they're claiming, but you know, a greater vibration damping characteristic. I don't know, I don't think so. Do they feel uh, more comfortable than a deeper carbon rim? Yeah, for sure, that's something that 
even a knucklehead like myself can feel. You know, if you have a, a deeper carbon rim, which is becoming pretty common on some of these gravel race bikes, carbon is almost always <laughs> much stiffer than a spoke. So the shorter the spoke, the more the carbon you have, the stiffer the ride is. Having a longer metal spoke and a shallower rim like these makes for a more comfortable ride. So apples to oranges, of course I can tell the difference. Apples to apples, that's getting into the area where it can be measured in a lab for sure. Can it be felt or discerned by human? I don't know. How they were measuring or how they are measuring in a lab is by putting accelerometers on the rim, giving it a whack and seeing how quickly that whack dissipates on their rims and on others. We did something similar years ago at Vela News, you know, Leonard Zinn, uh, Nick Legan, Kaylee Fretz and myself. We had uh, a number of what we were calling classics bikes or endurance road bikes. And we were trying to tease out the differences in the frame design and then the differences in the tires. And so we put, uh, you know, similar idea, put accelerometers at different points on the frame, some right under the saddle, some uh, down near the axles and at other points on the frame, and then rode those bikes on rollers that we had welded metal rods across. So you're riding on bumpy rollers and seeing which bike not just felt to the humans to be more comfortable, but showed uh, via these accelerometers, which was the most absorbing. We had four bikes. The differences between the bikes were quite small if you standardized the tire width and tire pressure. At the time, the Specialized Roubaix had 25 mil tires, which was gargantuan <laughs> at the time. This wasn't that long ago, but it's funny how quickly things have changed. The rest of the endurance bikes had 23s, the Roubaix had 25s, and when you used just the stock tires, Surprise, surprise, the 25 mil tires blew the others away in terms of uh, vibration damping. So a bit of a, a rabbit hole there, but all that to say, there's a lot of different things you feel on a bike. The rim, yes, factors into it, but tire width and tire pressure are the big ones that you feel, followed closely by, at least on this bike, when you've got a lot of flex in the seat post, that is something you can feel compared to like a really rigid post and then your saddle, et cetera, et cetera. So vibration damping on a rim. I do believe these guys that they have tested their rim against others and there's a measurable difference. What I'm trying to say is on the course of two lumpy bumpy rides on a Canyon Grail, could I tell that these are markedly different than other rims of a similar depth with the same tire and tire pressure? No, I cannot, but they don't feel harsh. By, by any stretch. I will be riding these wheels more at uh, Belgian Waffle Ride California, among other places, and I'll be doing a video there on these wheels, this bike, and some other bits and bobs. So check back for that. In the meantime, you can check out Forge and Bond on their new website. I'll put the link down below to that. One thing I can discern and appreciate is the color and design. I'm a blue guy, I like the blue. I like this blue and you know what? The logo looks quite similar to my personal bike, my Envy Road with the Zia symbol. I'm a New Mexico boy, love the look of that. Looks oddly similar, don't you think? So sorry, Forge and Bond, a, uh, a cease and desist letter from my lawyers may be forthcoming. Seriously though, I like how the things look. I've got two sets here because they accidentally sent me two. There's one set to test. This set showed up. This is going back in the box, which brings up a point that somebody was asking me about the other day. Hey, how do these reviews on your site work? Do the companies pay you for the stuff or give you this stuff? No, that's not how it works. Companies will loan me the product, whether it's a grail or a wheel set for a matter of time. I ride the thing, give you my two cents on what I think of it, put it back in the box and ship it back to the company. Companies don't pay for reviews because then it wouldn't be a review. So how I'm making this thing work, as it were, is through the support of companies that aren't conflicting with the product I'm reviewing. Giro helmets, feedback, tools and stands and Castelli clothing. So those brands are supporting me so I can give you my unadulterated, if half-baked feedback on bikes and wheels and other bits 
that I'm testing. So we'll leave it there for now. And I will thank you for watching. I will thank you for subscribing. And as always, whether you are riding black wheels or blue wheels, red wheels or green wheels, enjoy the ride. And then we rode down a creek that turned into a waterfall. But at least it was icy. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha!